Hello and welcome to Long's Toys. Today I have a Transformers 4 Age of Extinction review for you. Uh, this is one of the two packs that is a Walmart exclusive. Basically what they are is older figures repainted to be characters from the new movie. Uh, this Triceratops mold I believe is from the Dinobot subline of Beast Machines. Uh, and I believe this Legend class figure is from Revenge of the Fallen slash Goldbox era that followed. Um, and they're just repainted as Stinger and Dinobot Slug, respectively. There are a couple other of these. There is one that is Bumblebee and Strafe, where the Strafe is a blue-painted uh, pterosaur from Beast, Beast Wars. And then the Bumblebee, I believe, is from Transformers Prime uh, Legend class. And then there's another one, I believe, with Optimus and a Grimlock that is a repaint of Energon... Uh, the name escapes me, but the kind of Energon T-Rex, I believe his name. No, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on his name right now. But that is an Energon toy, one of the Energon uh, Terracons. Not much on the back here, just kind of shows how they transform. So let's go ahead and get these guys out of the packaging and take a look. Okay, so here we have the two out of the package. Here we have Slug and Stinger. I'm going to start with Stinger first, just because he is the simpler of the two. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer here. He's got some pretty nice detailing. Little black accents, got stripes here on the top, stripes on the side, stripes again you'll see in vehicle mode. Pretty nice. The face sculpt, it's kind of hard to see because it's so tiny, but it's pretty decent. His transformation is fairly simple because he is a Legends class. You're just going to kind of lift this up and basically there you have the front of the car. These two pieces will just sandwich together. And then these black legs will fold up. Then the arms will turn 180. And then you can see that they'll just fold back here and peg together to make the back of the vehicle mode. So there you have it. Very simple transformation, but a fun little transformation. I think he looks nice. Like I said before, nice detailing. I like the black stripes. And although Stinger in the movie is not technically a Decepticon, he does have his Decepticon symbol on the hood there. A little bit of robot kibble underneath. Nice head. <laughs> but uh, overall, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a nice little repaint of a mold that I already liked, I already thought was fun. So, I like it a lot. So we'll go ahead and move on to Slug. Now, as I've said before, I believe Slug is a repaint of a Triceratops mold that was from the Dinobot subline of Beast Machines. If I'm wrong about that and somebody can correct me, let me know in the comments, but I believe that to be true. He comes with two accessories, these two black missiles. Nothing special, just missiles. I'll show you where they go later on. I really like the blue eyes. I love the red uh, paint on the crest here and the red horns. I think those blue eyes, though, are really cool. Just those, col those three colors work really well together. He's got some nice black paint up top. Everything else is pretty much purple. But overall, I think he looks pretty good. As far as his transformation goes, he is kind of a shell former. And it does get kind of annoying. But after one or two times, you can kind of get the hang of it. Basically, you just start by kind of popping the head forward. And you can see that'll unpeg from right here. Uh, right here are feet. You can kind of see the break in the plastic right there. You're just going to go ahead and fold that down and straighten it out to make feet and heels. As you can see there. Go ahead and do that on both sides. Then you're going to kind of come around to the front legs, and they have these little black pieces that will swivel out. So you can go ahead and do that on both sides. Uh, then you're going to kind of just get them out of the way for now, flip them around. This is where it gets a little tricky because all the panels are just going to open up. So like this piece will fold back. Then this top panel is going to kind of move up. And then underneath, these two panels will split apart. And it's just a matter of now you kind of have to move everything around so the panels get out of each other's way. 
which is easier said than done. You can kind of rotate this arm around and get that out of the way a little bit. This is going to kind of, uh, under here you'll see the other arm, so you can get that out of the way. And then you're going to try to rotate this part. Hold on, let me adjust the camera here. You're going to rotate this kind of out to the side as much as you can. And then you're going to want to rotate this. Hold on, let me get a better vantage on this. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a better vantage point. I've just kind of turned it 90 degrees. Here in the waist, these two pieces here are going to kind of collapse in a little bit. There's a series of joints. And it's going to be hard to see because everything's black and casting shadow. But the waist pieces will kind of fold in. If I can get a decent grip on them. And then they'll sandwich together. And that'll form his waist piece. So now that you have that done, as you can see it now, these two pieces in the middle, they fold in together. Then you can try to go about these, these two back pieces... These panels, this and this, are the most annoying. You need to rotate the torso. Nine, let it start out like this, and then you rotate it 90 degrees. But to do that, you kind of have to get this panel out of the way. It's kind of annoying, and I really don't want to break it while I'm trying to do this. You can kind of get the arm out of the way, but it takes some doing. But once you're able to rotate that, and then you just kind of have to find clearance so that you can rotate these panels around to kind of make them workable. But before you get them too much in the way, you're going to want to rotate this back piece up on this big black kind of piece right here that is a hinge because it has a pin right here. So if you can get that up, then you can kind of just get these two panels hopefully out of the way like this and then you can take this tail part and just pop that off that'll become a weapon we'll take a look at that in a minute so if you can finally get these panels out of the way and then straighten out the legs and then you can bring the shoulder down and rotate the dinosaur head to become the arm this giant piece just kind of becomes a shoulder pad and he's got this little hand underneath so you can just kind of position that how you want. But if you can finally get him with all his back kibble out of the way, it's a bit to do, but what you're left with is kind of a cool, short little stocky guy. Let's see if I can get him to stand there. So there we go. And I'll move in a little bit closer here. So here we have Slug in robot mode. As I said, and as you saw, it's a little bit difficult to transform them just because of all the panels and how they kind of get in the way during the transformation. I want to get up close here so you can check out his head sculpt. I do really think his head sculpt is pretty cool. To me, it kind of reminds me almost of like Ironhide or something. Just kind of a really like tough, doesn't want to be messed with, ready to start a fight type of guy. And I really like the design of his head, how it kind of has like almost like a rhino's ears and a horn up top here. And it's some nice paint. As far as his weapons go, he does have this tailpiece. And I really like the Autobot symbol here. I think that's really nicely painted in there. This little piece uh, can fold down to become a, a handle. But unfortunately, due to the curvature, sorry, let me focus here, due to the curvature of the tail, he really can kind of only hold it underneath. And even then, the panels in the back kind of get in the way. So he can kind of hold it from underneath, and then you can go ahead and load one of the two missiles that he comes with. And it does fire by pressing right here. And it fires fairly decently, I have to say. It really does. As far as his robot mode goes, it's kind of just a mess. Uh, I never had any of the Beast Machines Dinobot line. And maybe I'm starting to see why. I really like the paint scheme. I like the colors. I really like the detailing. 
But this robot mode is just kind of a mess. I mean, you have a giant trike head over here for his one arm. Then he's kind of got this little black hand over here that you can hardly see because this shoulder pad is such a mess. And then they kind of put these weird little gun things sticking out of the hooves up there just because otherwise you just have, you know, front paws or front legs hanging off the side. The back is just a mess of panels and a giant part of his tail. And there's just not really a great way to pose that back kibble. I mean, just from the front, he does look pretty good as far as, I think, his robot mode. Hold on a second. I'm trying to... I'm not sure why this is... There we go. It's washing out just a little bit. Um, I, I like the way he's kind of short and stocky, like he's ready for a fight, but he's just got so much kibble on him. The back is a mess. If they had found a better way to handle that, I think he would have worked out a little bit better, but I don't know. I really just think this whole back area is just kind of a mess. So when all said and done, would I recommend this set? Yes and no. I mean, it, it retails for about $14.99, and if you figure this was a deluxe toy at one time and this was a legend at one time by itself, the value equals $15, about $10 and $5. Like I said, it really is up to you as far as how you feel about this guy right here. I think this guy's great. I think the coloring's nice. It's a fun, easy transformation. It's one of the better legends. I like the robot mode once you can kind of finally get him in there, minus the kibble. But just to look at the actual robot, I like the short stockiness of it. It gives it character. I like the face. I like the head sculpt. I think it's nice. It's just the transformation is a pain getting him back and forth with all the kibble and all the panels and everything. But I think the paint is nicely done. The color scheme is great. So it's really just a matter of if you're going to transform it once and then sit it on a shelf and you just love the colors, absolutely, it might totally be worth it for you. If you're planning on picking up something that you want to give to a kid to transform back and forth, then I would say probably not because the transformation is very complicated. I'd probably steer you more in the way of the Bumblebee with the Pterosaur because that's an auto transformation from Beast Wars. That's fairly easy. So I do like the set. My only complaint is the transformation for the slug is a bit difficult. But tell me what you guys think in the comments. Please like and share this video. Please make sure you're subscribed. There'll be links in the description for my Facebook and Twitter. Please follow me on there as well. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Walmart exclusive 2-pack of Slug and Stinger from Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. And thanks for watching.